I mean, if I say to you, yes, I'm in love with this young man... This 12-year-old boy. Why is that automatically so terrible? Because we, as a society... Well, yes, but I could say to you, oh, how can you be in love with a 25-year-old woman that's sick? It's unnatural. Because a 25-year-old woman knows what she wants. She can make up her own mind. If you think a 12-year-old boy doesn't know what he wants, you've never been with a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> no, I certainly have not. Yeah, that's it, right there. I want to get a sound bite of you on that no, I certainly have not. Ah, uh, you mean like, uh, no, I certainly have not. You don't want the laugh. No. You want it harder? Yeah, harder. harder. So, <clears throat> say, no. Oh, no. No, I certainly have not. A little, little more? No, I certainly have not. Great, if we can get something like okay. that. Okay. Oh, Thanks. Oh, boy. How uh, some people let you interview them. Yeah. I got a blue sheet here I want you to see. You always wanted to do something about prescription drug abuse? Yeah, but it's got to be something original, you know. It can't be the usual people are hung on drugs kind of thing. Yeah, well, we got this guy, a guy who used to work with us, and he called us the other night. It was at a party out in Queens. And it turns out that they had just about every kind of drug imaginable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, there's apparently a, a, a medical clinic out there where you can walk in and basically buy a prescription for anything that strikes your fancy. Oh, that's a new wrinkle. Now, do you think that that's, uh, you think that's life and death in there? Well, percodans and quaaludes and so on. I mean, stuff like that can loss you up pretty good. Mm-hmm, <laughs> so... We could sit some doctors down and we could say, what were you doing writing this prescription? Exactly. I like it. Tomorrow, you meet me after my class? Sure. Hey. I'll call you. That's it. There we go. Thank you. You can let go of your fist now. With this, I'll run a few tests. I'd like to get it straightened out. You know, I missed some work and uh, boss. Try and get you back in the saddle as soon as we can. Any change of uh, eating habits? Appetite? Nope. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll give you a call first thing tomorrow morning. Do I have to pay you right away? Uh, I mean... No, no, no. Let's see if I do any good first. Huh? Okay, Harold tells me we've got you here for exactly 72 hours, so... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> not very much, and I'm sorry it's not anymore, but we didn't get everything we needed in that story on Bond, so I've got to go right back here. Well, we've got things pretty well lined up here, so unless something falls through, crew guys have been great. Okay, Harold wanted one expert-type witness. That's this guy here. He's a doctor at Manhattan General. I asked him these questions here on the telephone. He's a sweetheart. Uh... This here is what we trace back on the ownership of the place. You should have great fun with that. <laughs> it's a wild story. I like it. I like it. Now, this guy is a great interview. In fact, this guy's too great an interview. You have to shut him up. Oh, fine. Um, that's background on him. The lions. Brad, did you fix that cable? Yeah, I did. Okay, just say anything for me, please. <clears throat> oh, God, I'm so nervous. 
Kids, don't take Valium or you'll end up in an apartment like this. That's great. I bet you don't get nervous like this, Bob. Brad, can you lower that flag an inch or so? Yeah, right there. No. Okay. Bob, you want to cheat a bit to your right, please? That's good. That's good. That's good. And Michael, you're fine where you are. You might want to scoot down just a wee bit. Good. Okay, can we try one? Yep. <clears throat> Let her rip. Sound rolling. <coughs> Camera. And? Now, until recently, you were a patient at the Queen's Alliance Medical Clinic. That's right. What medical complaint were you going to the clinic for? I didn't have any medical complaint. I went there to get Valium. You know, prescriptions. To get prescriptions for Valium? That's correct. During that time, were you even once examined formally? By a doctor? I'm Dr. Lucas. I have an appointment. Go right in. She's expecting you. I think this is everything you wanted to see. Um, Dr. Lucas, uh, let's see. You were still incorporated in New Jersey during the time of this lease? That's right, yes. I mean, the nerve of those people, stiffing me for the deposit. The condition I left the office in, compared to the rest of their lousy building, I mean, if I didn't need the money, I wouldn't bother with it. I thought all you doctors were rich driving around in Mercedes. I thought all you lawyers were rich. Touche. Okay. I'll write him a letter. Thank you. Thank you. And ask them if they ever got the elevator running. Right here in the corner, the entrance is around the front. That's where we're going. So what we want to watch out for is this exit right here. That's where we want to watch out for that exit right there, because that's where we're getting out from. These are the questions we've worked out for you. Right there. Note the cars. This kind of neighborhood. Okay, what we got here basically is three pieces. Two stand-ups out here, and then the one big one inside. Okay, guys? Modest try to take building. A surprise. Right around the, the front, modest okay? neighborhood. Do you have your prescription? That will be 150. Hi, I'm Bob Franklin, Hourglass. Could you tell me, is Dr. Edward Lucas here? What are you doing here? Who told you people Whoa. you could come? I would just Whoa. like... What? Whoa. What? Bad sound cable. We'll oh. have to go out again. Oh. All right, come on. Come on, let's go. I'm really sorry. Jesus Christ! Oh, please, feel free to be just as upset as you were there. It's fine. Stu, Stu, Stu. Let's go, let's go. You about ready to knock off in here? Am I? Good. Let's close up and go get a beer. Oh, Jeremy. Just about had it. You've had it. Oh, I've been hassling with the store manager for like 20 minutes here, trying to get paper towels for the washroom. And the guy starts in, I said, look, buddy, our clients come in here, some of them are charged with major crimes, felonies, some of them are facing deportation. That's bad enough. You want them to go around like this for 10 minutes. Hey. Well, they should have told us that when they sold us the franchise. Law firm does not include paper towels. Hey, don't start putting down Hardesty and Luckman again. As long as they keep up that national advertising, I'm happy. I don't know, Jeremy. I never quite saw myself practicing at a firm that promotes itself on bus benches. Hey, that's visibility. And it must be working because we're going to be in the black before we project it. Well, we're certainly working hard enough. You know, I've got a divorce case right now. It's hung up over who gets the video recorder. No. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the real law firms are doing tonight. What kind of video recorder those people have? I was a zombie by that point. Well, what kind of uh, physical examination did they give you at the clinic? 
I didn't have a physical examination. No uh, uh, blood pressure, no stethoscope? They physically examine your wallet. That's about it. <laughs> I just love this guy. I'm going to marry him. Yeah, it was the no, high point in his life, too. Tony, can you skip ahead? Oh. I want to get the Mr. Big. Well, that seems to work fine now. Shave something off that? Yes, well, we didn't need to hear his every innermost thought. Here is Mr. Big, the manager of the clinic, trying to make his getaway down the back fire escape. Do doctors on your staff prescribe mood-altering drugs to people without an examination? Well, they would do whatever is necessary to uh, see, uh, to find out if there was a necessary prescription. And what if I told you that a member of our staff went into your clinic and got a prescription for Percodan? Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, uh, she could have a, a, a condition that would uh, mean that she should have that kind of medication. It would be warranted. I mean, if I worked for you, I might need that kind of medication myself. Excuse me. And if I told you she was not given a medical examination. Well, that still doesn't mean anything. She could have been a prior patient. And the entire thing is on film. Now, look, you come here with your lights and your cameras. You're making accusations against people. Turn that thing off. Now, we're not making accusations, but she did yeah, go to your clinic. Yeah, right there. And she did oh, get that... That, that seems to be going on a little long. How long is that piece? Uh, 140. Yeah, you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see you go right from the question about the prescription right to where you really get to the guy. Yeah, the look, you come here a bit... Yeah, yeah, because we got a piece of film covers the other thing in it. Well, you, know, you make the cut, but keep the hand over the lens in, you know. That'd be fine with it. That should work, eh, Tony? We'll just cut to Bob? Yeah, just give me a second here, and I'll show it to you that way. How, how do we stand on the legal aspects of this thing? Fine. Everything I've seen so far, sure. Where you been hiding? Uh, you know, top floor next to the ladies' underwear, keeping half the population of queens out of jail. That's a noble calling, don't you forget. Come on, help me shop. Can you stay for two nights? I don't know. Why? Well, if you can stay for two nights, I can make the chicken like you like. With lemons. Now that's attractive. Oh, and I've got all these hearings coming up. I've got all these files to read. See, it's a problem in home economics. You can't stay, and I keep buying these small sizes. It's not so much a relationship we have here, it's more of a school lunch program. Well, it's your fault. I'm just doing like you taught me. I'm just a plain folks lawyer out there helping the little people. That is what I taught you. Are you sorry you studied with me? No. That was the correct answer. And for that, what the hell? I'll make it with the lemons for one night. Thank you. You're welcome. BTR! 15 to studio! Good evening. Hourglass, the nine, weekly magazine from eight, ABS News. Seven, this week, six, Bob Franklin reports five, on drug dealers four, with a medical degree. Three, two, one. Q. Franklin. The Queen's Alliance Medical Clinic in Queens, New York, is a modest building on a rundown side street in a rundown neighborhood. So, how do you explain the steady flow of Mercedes, Porsches, Jaguars? to and from this building. Cars whose drivers you might expect to get their doctoring somewhere on Manhattan's uh, Park Avenue. The answer is quite simple. The Queen's Alliance Medical Clinic is a pill mill. Now that's a place where for the right price, say $150, you can buy a prescription for Cricodans. 
tranquilizers, amphetamines, quaaludes, even synthetic morphine. And that's without going through the usual uh, formalities, such as a medical examination. And narcotics authorities say clinics like this one present a growing problem. Get on. Oh, hi, Mort. How are you? No, I didn't. They... Now? About the clinic? What station is it on? Okay, thanks, Martin. So you want Valium? Yes. Yes. And I just wanted to get it refilled. All right. That will be an office consultation. And the fee for that is $150. Fine. I'll be by this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you then. <laughs> the uh, patient got his prescription that afternoon. 50 Valium. Signed by Dr. Edward Lucas. A physician on staff at that clinic. Jesus Christ, what are you saying? Now, is Dr. Lucas here? I'd like to talk to him about this prescription. He's not here right now. Nobody's here to talk to you. Now, I notice Dr. Lucas has signed his name to this memo. Can you tell me what hours he keeps? I think you people should leave. I don't think you should be here. Dr. Lucas didn't respond to messages from our lab. But with this special camera, we filmed this encounter between another doctor at the clinic and a member of the Hourglass staff who wore a concealed microphone when she posed as a new patient with an interest in synthetic morphine. As you'll hear, she used the correct password, the name of a Manhattan doctor who has referred customers to the clinic. Okay, here goes. Oh, now, what can we do for you today? Um, well, I've been having a lot of trouble sleeping lately, and... Uh... I was referred here by Dr. Morrissey. And at one time, I tried taking Percodans, and that seemed to help quite a bit. You've been under a lot of stress. Yes, I have. I have a lot of trouble relaxing, you know. Would you like a prescription for Percodan? Yes, I, w I would. Um, I could pay the fee for an office consultation. Lauren, you junkie. <laughs> yeah, well, what can I tell you? doing this for years, and you make a lot of money. But when you see what it does to people, it's just not worth it. Local police are investigating the clinic, and it should soon be much harder to buy a prescription from a pusher with a medical degree. Next week on Our Glass, Bob Franklin's exclusive interview with the defense minister of Syria a look at famine relief fundraising, and a visit to a prestigious college whose students are cats. Well, um, that's not going to help me get your driver's license back, is it? All right. I'll call you. Oh, okay. Hi, Dr. Lucas. I looked up those laws regarding that lease and... This isn't about that. What is it? I want to sue that hourglass program on television. They lied about me to millions of people. I want to sue them. Uh, oh, let me, uh, let me see if I can cancel a couple of my appointments. He holds this thing up on television and he says, this guy's a drug pusher. Lock him up. He signed this prescription. Did you? What do you mean, did I? That's what I'm trying to tell you. I never saw that piece of paper before. I have no way of knowing that, Doctor. What, is everybody going nuts on me here? Hey, I... I can see you're upset, and I want to help you. But all I know about you before today is that you're a doctor, you've had some problems with the lease in New Jersey. I hadn't even worked at that place for three or four months. Are you saying someone forged your signature to that prescription? Yes. So you quit the Queen's Health Medical Alliance three, four months ago, long before the hourglass people were even there. Now you're at the Meridian Clinic. No, ma'am. Um, I went in there this morning. They 
called me over in a corner like I was a disease carrier. They fired me right there, no discussion. They had all my stuff in boxes already. You're telling me the truth. No. I'm sorry. Some of my clients never tell anyone the truth. But if this happened the way you say, I think we can bring suit for libel. Libel or slander. Probably collect a settlement, maybe $50,000, maybe more. Without a trial? I don't think they want to take this to court. Have you handled this type of thing before? Well, it's kind of a specialized area of law, libel and slander. If you feel uncomfortable, you should go to someone else. No, no. I, I just lost my job. I'm not going to go to some big law firm and ask them to sue a television network. I'm just a little doctor. They never even interviewed him or anything. I'm going to get this guy some serious money. Sounds great. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a real case, you know? Arguments, everything. It's not just a divorce because you're drunk and driving or something. Who's representing the TV people? Miller Investing. Shit. I know those guys. I used to work for them. That's a whole different ball game. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm so excited. I'm sure you'll do well for the guy. Lauren? Y yeah. Got a minute? Mm. Not to get upset. It's probably a great big nothing. There's this one doctor from the clinic piece. He's bringing a suit. What, the, the one that we interviewed? No, the one we didn't get to. Apparently we got Bob saying the guy signed something. He says he wasn't even working at the time. Lucas, well, those people may have lied to us. I suppose that would hardly be surprising. Let me see this. It's nothing to get upset about. It's, uh, <laughs> you never get sued. You're probably not doing your job. I just want to make you aware of it. We'll probably have to go see our lawyers. Okay, uh, God, I'm really sorry about this, Harold. Stout hard pal. It's not a crisis. Well, I'm sure everyone's had a chance to look at this, and I know that you, Ferris, have read the suit. I think we did everything that was reasonable in going over the piece. I'm sure you did. So, here's how the thing appears at this time. The doctor claims that you made a mistake that damaged him, and I'm sure he feels that a big, fat settlement would ease the damage considerably. Well, the guy says he wasn't even working there, and we have him signing this thing. Yes, but let's not be unfair to ourselves on this either. I mean, you want to do the best job possible. And if someone accuses you of making a mistake, well, you get upset, as anyone would. But what we're looking at here is a legal question. Now, where's Mr. Franklin, by the way? Beirut? Beirut? Yeah, he'll be back tomorrow, I think. Well, if we contain this, as I'm sure we can, he won't really have to be bothered with it. Oh, Steve, do we know anything about the lawyer that filed this suit? Yeah, she's with... Hardesty and Luckman, they're out in Queens. It's one of those firms that have offices in shopping malls, franchises. They specialize in drunk driving and so on. We did a story on one of those, I think. So we could have something historical here. Could be the first slander case where the plaintiff tries to introduce a breathalyzer test as evidence. <laughs> you don't think we're looking at a settlement here? No, I sure don't think so. I think we're looking at something we can clear up in a couple of weeks. Oh, one thing, if this uh, Meredith Craig, guy's lawyer, she tries to contact you, please don't speak with her. I mean, not even hello. It's policy and it makes life easier. Uh, Ferris, I may ask you to collect a few statements on your end so we can build up a file. And now, I wonder if plaintiff's counsel has a lunch free next week. Guess who I'm having lunch with tomorrow? Me? 
<laughs> no. Jack Coburn from Miller. Jesus, what for? To discuss the case. He's representing the television. No, 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 no. I mean, what are you going for? Why wouldn't I? Because you have nothing to gain by it. All he's going to do is try to mess up your mind. Will you quit being my teacher for one minute? Hey, I guarantee. Oh, not a lecture, please. A private club full of hotshot lawyers, and he'll make a big deal out of ordering the right wine, and then he'll have a superior court judge or somebody like that just happen to drop by the table, and then he'll start taking your case apart, okay? I've seen this little puppet show before. In fact, I used to do it. I am a big girl. Will you quit worrying? Okay. Tell me about your client, Dr. Um... Lucas. He's a general practitioner with an excellent record. Not a very distinguished practice, though, down in that, uh, that clinic. Well, that's true. It's no place fancy, but then that doesn't have anything to do with this case, does it? I guess not. Although, just trying to think about it from your standpoint, if you get in court... You've got a plaintiff who's in pretty bad shape financially, working for this outfit that seems <laughs> sort of sleazy. And you want to establish that he's been substantially damaged by that broadcast, that he didn't, you know, <laughs> partake in any of the funny goings on. He didn't. No, no, that's your position, absolutely. No, that's not my position. That's the truth. He didn't. And you believe him? I mean, given his circumstances. He wasn't even working there at the time. Yes, but wouldn't you have to establish that he never did these kind of prescriptions? Well, if you want the jury to buy your whole package, you have that. And you have to establish reckless disregard on the part of the TV people. Well, by the way, I have to tell you, I think you did us one hell of a favor naming Bob Franklin in that complaint. <laughs> I hardly see what the favor was about it. I mean, the way it looks to me, he was the one who actually screwed up. I don't see that he screwed anything up. But look, you've got a man there that everybody in the country turns to every night to find what's happening. On the news, you know. And they're in the habit of believing every word he says. What are you going to do? Are you going to have someone in the courtroom holding up idiot cards for the man to read? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to court. You don't? Well, for someone who doesn't think I've got a case, you've gone to a hell of a lot of trouble to get me down here and try to convince me of that. Maybe I wanted to do you a favor. Such as? Such as suggesting you go back to what I'm sure you do very well for the vast majority of your clients. Look, if you're thinking of a settlement in this case, or of a trial, God forbid, telling a jury of grown men and women that the kindly old doc was setting ankle fractures at You gentlemen bucks. will excuse me. And, uh... I had the lamb chops. Yes, yes, yes. Look, if you did the stuff they said on television about the prescriptions, you have to tell me now. Of course I did it. How do you think I paid for this mansion? What is it with you? I want you to think about not settling, going to trial instead. How come? Because they don't want to go to court. Their lawyer took me to lunch today and put on a terrific show trying to scare me into dropping this action. What about our settlement? Well, if we lose in court, we lose it all, but... But if we win in court, we win so much more. It's not just the money. If you're clean, you can be vindicated in a trial. Get your job back. Help if you started to believe me. If we can prove it, I'll believe it. How do you prove it? If something's true, there's a way to prove it. I think. Now, uh, what exactly did you know when you were working there? Well, I knew there was something out of line. A lot out of line. But I didn't want to start a second career answering questions at the district attorney's office, so I got out. If I'd have known what they are going to do to me, I... Who at the clinic seems suspicious to you? 
you want to start alphabetically or by height? Mr. Franklin, Bill Lewis, all this time. Can we have a couple of minutes, sir? Just a couple of minutes. Come on, come on. Mr. Franklin, have you you any new evidence? Look, there's nothing I can tell you. Mr. Franklin, how's it going to affect your ratings on our last year? I cannot answer your questions because those are things that will be decided in court. Please. Mr. Franklin, are the ABS lawyers posting Come on, your ladies and gentlemen, give me a break. The only way to destroy the bacteria is to burn the affected plants. So far, nearly one and a quarter million trees have been... It should be fun for the residents and the mayor. Look, uh, Jack Coburn called me. He called you? As a courtesy, he said. He says you're acting like you want to take this thing to trial. As a matter of fact, I am. But what the hell business does he have calling you up? He called me because he knows me, and he knows I know you. And I know he can be a horse's ass, but he's also a very good lawyer, and he can see you're in over your head. Well, how nice to call up his old buddies so the little lady doesn't make a fool of herself. Please. It doesn't matter what he's saying. I'm telling you. If you take this thing to trial, you're selling your client down the river. At least with the settlement, there was a chance. I'm telling you that Lucas should not have to settle. This guy Franklin goes in front of 60 million people and tells them that my client signed a phony prescription. I'm going to prove that he didn't. Please, I read the newspapers. I know what the facts are. But that's not what this case is about. It's going to be, was he damaged? And well, what's damaged mean, really? And were they reckless? And well... Reckless in what sense? <laughs> what damages are you asking for? A million special in general land and five million punitive. Forget punitive. They would have had to go after the guy with malice for you to get punitive. You're going to have a hard enough time establishing reckless disregard for the truth. You want to start screwing around on malice? Do you think you really know this kind of law? God damn it! They invaded this man's privacy. They put his name on a phony prescription form. Only ruined his life. That is the most unethical ethics. display. You're concerned about ethics? Let me tell you something. A case like this, you're never going to get the evidence, interviews, witnesses you need without bending those ethics you hold so the dear. The hell I will. The hell you won't. You'll be like them and do everything they do. Look, he chose me to be his lawyer on this case, and he has agreed to do it. Hey, doctors can be idiots, too. Look, there are two kinds of law, and they have very little to do with each other, okay? There's the kind of law you do every day that you think is so boring. Criminal stuff, immigration, people's little tragedies. And the thing about that kind of law is it's he did it or he didn't do it. It's right or it's wrong. He signed the prescription thing or he didn't. I'm aware that it's more complicated than that. And then there is another kind of law, the kind they teach at Harvard, the kind they practice at Miller and Vestine, and that is this kind of law. It's not right and wrong. It's legal niceties. It's the law corporations use to screw around with each other. It's jurisprudence and arguments and standing and precedents. It's what finally drove me nuts, so I decided to take a job teaching people like you to be lawyers for regular people. And for you to get things so backwards in your head. Yeah, but the jury's not going to be people from Harvard Law School. <laughs> Christ. I'll tell you what. You're not taking this to trial because it's in the client's best interest. You're taking it to trial because you're tired of practicing law in the shopping center. And you think this is the real case you've been waiting for to come along ever since you left goddamn Arkansas. Yeah. Well, as long as I'm in that shopping center doing the good little law like you taught me, and I come to you with all of my little worries and all of my little problems, then you're happy. Everything's fine with you. I'll tell you something. You're not afraid I'm going to lose this goddamn case. You're afraid I'm going to win it. Oh, and of course the television people were reckless. Obviously they were reckless. Oh, obviously. And when did you become such an expert on slander and libel? When did you become such a goddamn pain in the ass? How much longer? How much longer? Excuse me. Mr. Craig, could I see you for a moment? How much? Certainly. Excuse me. Is she a lawyer? You a lawyer? Excuse me. This is getting a little out of hand, Mary. 
And we've got people piling up out there. Well, there must be walk-ins, because I haven't missed any of my appointments. Well, see, walk-ins are how we get a lot of our business. Except when half of us aren't around, we don't get the business. Well, I'm sorry, but I told you I had things to do outside today. I know. But this isn't working out. We're about to break even here, but this case of yours... I haven't been neglecting anything. I don't see how you couldn't, because you got about 20 million people to subpoena on that thing. Excuse me. I think I'm going to have to get somebody else in here till you step down from the front page. Fine. That's what you have to do. Yeah, but that's what I don't want to do. You're my partner. Well, you were the last time I looked. God damn it! I still am. I just... I have to do this case. That's all I know right now. Well, it's my fault. I mean, I was the one that had to get the franchise of a law firm. Any brains right now, I could have could have had a nice Burger King. I'm sorry, Jeremy. If you're on your way out of here, I have to know that's all. I uh, don't know. Look, uh, why don't I give you a hand with your case sometime, and you can help me right now with what's piling up out there, okay? Sure, <laughs> sure. Good. Go ahead. I'll be right out. I just have to make one, one phone call. Thanks. Lauren? Lauren, there's a call for you on 18. A Meredith Craig? No, I'm not here. Sandy, I really appreciate you doing this for me. Ah, oh, sure. It beats working. <laughs> well, for this case, I subpoenaed... I got all of the videotape that used to do the show. Everything they shot. I just didn't realize how much it would be. They sent over boxes and boxes. Yeah, yeah, all the outtakes. Yeah, well, that's when I realized. I don't know anything about television. I hope you don't mind. I just brought everything. I can see that. Look, I'll set you up with a machine and a monitor, and I'll lasso one of the editors so we can come down and explain all about editing procedures. You know, singles, reverses, that sort of thing. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, tape editing techniques. Like, if you have a lot of tape from an interview and you want to move some stuff around, maybe use an answer from somewhere and put it somewhere else and shorten it. They do a lot of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you have to. Look. For an average 10-minute feature, we shoot probably two hours, which we then edit down to 10 minutes by airtime. Now, a network is going to shoot 10 times as much for the same feature. It's amazing how much you can do. Detective Mackin? I'm Meredith Craig. Keep moving. I called you. Oh. Hi. Come on in. How's it going? Okay, thanks. Uh, I was wondering if you could help me out. Um, I know you're involved in the investigation of the Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic. Us in the DA's office, yeah. Well, I was wondering if uh, you've turned up any hard evidence that my client, Dr. Edward Lucas, was involved in any of the illegal prescription writing down there. You mean like uh, someone making a positive idea of him doing it, something like that? No. Could I get you to testify at this civil trial? It would mean a lot to us. Jeez, I'm afraid not. It's an ongoing investigation. We don't make it a practice of going around saying we haven't found anything on someone, especially since we might find something down the line. Not that I'm saying we will in this case. Well, if you find anything helpful, would you give me a call? Sure. Hey, counselor. 
have a donut? <laughs> well, my thighs, thank you. Mm. So, how's it going? Jim, mm. um, I don't know. I got all of their outtakes. What? Mm. Well, that's the film that they shoot, but they don't use it when they do the program. It ends up on the cutting room floor. It's incredible how much they manipulate that stuff when they edit it. I'm going to try to show that in court. How are you doing on uh, proving to the world what a straight arrow your doctor is? I don't know what else to do. Well, you subpoena the uh, clinic people? Oh, sure. But they're up to their ass in a criminal proceeding. The last thing they want to do is testify for us. Their lawyer filed about 80 objections. I've got my guy's prescription log. And? Uh, five million tetracyclines, uh, hemorrhoid cream here and there. That's the racy stuff. Those are the ones he did write. As far as you know. What I need are the ones that he didn't write. Just one of those patients saw someone forge his name. Unless they're too smart down there to allow anybody to see him do that. They were greedy. They could have gotten careless. These guys are vermin, you know? Yeah. No help. What are you going to do, though? It's uh, too close to trial time to subpoena anybody else. Will you give me a hand with this? Sure. Invading people's privacy. It would be extremely helpful to my client if you could I'm just. I'm sorry, but these records are strictly confidential. I understand that, but if you I'm could sorry. Just... May I help you? I'm glad nobody bothered, said the relief mother. Opening arguments are scheduled on Monday in the case of Dr. Edward Lucas, the Queen's New York physician, versus the Hourglass television show and anchorman Bob Franklin. Dr. Lucas claims that an episode of the popular magazine program slandered him. I'm closing up now. If you have a prescription, you'll have to come back. No, I need a favor. You don't have a prescription? Nope. I'm a lawyer, and I'm representing a Dr. Edward Lucas. He used to be over at that Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic. Oh, I see on the news he's suing. Mm -hmm. And we need help. Health Alliance, nothing. That was for junkies, that outfit. Junkies with a lot of money, some of them. You, uh, you filled some prescriptions from there? Oh, you bet. They drive up here in these cars, fancy cars. They said on television that my client wrote some of those prescriptions, but I know that he didn't. If I could go through your records... Oh, no, those records are confidential. Oh, I know that. I have been told that. But I'm trying to clear the man's good name. If I can find one person whose name is on one prescription... You can't look through my records. I've had a store here for over 40 years. Look, my client is a doctor. All he wants to do is practice medicine. They went on television and lied about him in front of millions of people. Oh, you... I have to close up now. You'll have to leave. Uh, you want to look at things? Come back tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, we've given you the depositions, the doctors and everybody's. Right, I've got them at home on my nightstand. Oh, Steve, I should give you these. These are roughly the questions I'll be asking you. <laughs> oh, that is a switch, you know. Usually I get the questions that I ask somebody else. We'll take some time and run through them a few times before the trial. Tell me a little about your background. Do you realize what you're letting yourself in for there? Just give them ten minutes or so. The jury's going to love it. Ah, now, do I play to them? I mean, directly? Mostly to me. No, you're answering my question. And you're going to fill me in on the story, you know, uh, how it was put together, because uh, 
I was in and out of here so fast, you know. Yeah, we've got that down for tomorrow. Now, with the opposing lawyer you want to be, you're not fighting with her. You have all the respect in the world. Doesn't sound a lot harder than most of my story. Easier, I promise you. Uh, this is a lot here. No kidding. You know, I think this clinic was keeping half the county stoned. <clears throat> We're going to call everyone with any of these funny prescriptions and Dr. Lucas's name on it. You want a new perspective on life sometime? Try spending about two days going through old records in a drugstore in Jamaica, Queens. Thanks. No, I'm quite fond of my old perspective. Listen, uh, if you don't mind me asking, is it legal to go through all this stuff? Actually, I do mind. Could I speak to Mr. Kilmartin, please? Thank you. Mr. Kilmartin, my name is Meredith Craig. I'm a lawyer representing Dr. Edward Lucas on a... No, no, there's no problem with your bill. I'm calling uh, yeah, Mrs. the prescriptions you received from uh, the yes, Queen's I'm an attorney, Health Alliance I'm Medical... Involved with a case involving Hello? Dr. Edward Lucas. Dr. Lucas. Hmm. Yeah, well, same to you, pal. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Um, Mrs. Milgram, if I could come and see you and talk to you about this, it would be extremely... Tomorrow? Tomorrow's fine. Eleven o'clock. Good. Good. Yes, I know exactly where that is. I mean, until it happens to you, yeah. you have no idea in the world. After, uh, after the operation, I had all this pain. And my doctor said, I'm, I'm going to give you these just while the pain. The pain, it, and it took me forever to figure out that, that I can't stop it. Your prescriptions, uh, they had Dr. Lucas's name on them? Ladies and gentlemen, one Thursday night, not long ago, my client, Dr. Edward Lucas, turned on his television set and watched as his life was changed forever and very much for the worse. On the television program that he watched, a very well-known, well-respected newsman said that my client had signed a prescription form prescribing a very dangerous and very powerful drug 
to a patient who had no medical need for that drug, but who wanted it in order to get high and who had paid my client to fulfill that desire. In other words, and these were the words used on that program, that my client was a drug pusher who just happened to have a license to practice medicine. The act my client was accused of on that program was one of the worst things a doctor can do. It's also a felony punishable by law and a very damaging thing to the doctor's reputation, something that will ruin him in his professional community. The signature on that prescription was forged. My client has never written a crooked prescription in his entire career, and yet he was singled out, mentioned by name in this broadcast, and he was never confronted by his accusers so that he could give his side of the story. He never even received a telephone call. We will show that my client was falsely accused by people who had a reckless disregard for whether their accusations were true or not. The people who bring us the news on television have an enormous amount of power. And in the case of Dr. Edward Lucas, this power was seriously abused and he was badly injured by it. You on the jury will have the opportunity to repair some of that damage. Thank you. The court will hear an opening statement from the defendants. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, I was sitting here just now and I was looking over at this jury and thinking back over the selection process. And I was thinking about, about how grateful we all are to you for sitting on what may be a very difficult, very complex case. Now, Miss Craig has said a great deal about a, a television broadcast without actually mentioning the name of the program involved. They may have a policy down there at Hardesty and Luckman of not giving any free publicity to the opposing clients in the case, I don't know. But the program, of course, is Hourglass. A very highly rated, award-winning program. And I'm very glad that this broadcast they worked on will be entered into evidence here because I think it's one of the finest things they've done on the program. To investigate this, <laughs> this clinic that was handing out these dangerous drugs as if they were children's aspirin to get a former patient and a doctor who were engaged in this to describe what went on and to actually catch one of these doctors in the act that's a remarkable achievement as i think you'll agree when you see this now we must be very clear about the law in this case if you look at the law as judge henderson will explain it the producers of Hourglass and Mr. Bob Franklin, they have to have told a damaging untruth about Dr. Lucas, and they have to have done so with malice toward him or with reckless disregard for the truth. And I would say <laughs> that if you went to that clinic, as Mr. Franklin did, and you saw Dr. Lucas's name all over the signs and the, the, the documents there, and you saw his name on a prescription from that clinic, and you tried to contact him, and he avoided speaking to you for some reason. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. <laughs> then I would say that you, like Mr. Franklin, would have a reasonable, good faith belief that it was. Dr. Lucas's signature you were looking at. And you certainly wouldn't be guilty of any malice or disregard in doing so. Now, if these elements are not there, if his reputation was not damaged, or if there was no such malice or disregard, well, then you will have the opportunity to find in favor of Bob Franklin and the Hourglass program. And I think that you could take considerable pride
in doing so. Thank you. Franklin, who's expected to testify at the trial in a few days, arrived in New York this afternoon. Yes. Meanwhile, in court, the jury heard a handwriting expert discuss the signature on the controversial prescription blank. While in the real signature, the large E almost invariably touches against the large C. But even more glaringly, the capital L in the question signature is radically different. Not very electrifying stuff, but it seemed to establish that the signature on the prescription was not Dr. Lucas's. For the All News Network, Bill Lewis at Supreme Court in New York. That was dumb, that business when Coburn called me up. I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to tell you. If you ask me, I, I am an open guy. Yeah. You're doing good in there. I've been watching. Thanks. Oh, I don't know. I'm about to put the doctor on the stand. You could make that work for you, play it right. You have time to talk about it? Ten minutes. Come on. Dr. Lucas, were you ever contacted by anybody from Hourglass? No, I wasn't. Did you happen to see the Hourglass program when it was first broadcast? Yes, I did. What was your reaction to it? I wanted to vomit. I mean, I mean you feel like your life is over, that everything is falling apart. You, you can't believe that it's happening. I remember people calling me up night and day people looking at me. They wanted to know if it was true. And was it true? No. I just wanted to tell my side to go on there. When they filmed their report, you weren't even working at that clinic anymore, were you, Dr. Lucas? No, I was at another clinic and I had some hospital practice. And you lost your job as a result of that program, didn't you? Yes, I did. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Lucas. No further questions, Your Honor. Dr. Lucas, what was your job at the Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic? I was a general practitioner on staff. So you saw people with everyday medical problems, infections and so on? Yes, sir. Were you paid a salary or...? A... Salary, yes. May I ask how much that was? $250 a week. Not a very large salary. Well, I only worked there one day a week. Doctor, were you aware of the uh, drug racket that was going on at the Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic? Objection, Your Honor, requires a conclusion. Overruled. Witness will answer the question. <coughs> well, I wasn't sure, but I knew that something was wrong there. That something was wrong? Yes, sir. When the people were lined up halfway down the block on Fridays with $100 bills in their fists, you felt that something was wrong? Friday wasn't the day I worked there. Yes, but you didn't report to the medical examiners or the police or anybody else. What was wrong? No. Why not? I, I just wasn't sure. I thought the best thing would be to get out of there. Uh, turn your back on it. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Strike the question. If you didn't have any other reason uh, not to report it? No, sir. So while all these other doctors were making great sums of money all around you, you continued quietly treating infections and so on for $250 a week? Yes, sir. Doctors, you know there's now a, a criminal investigation going on about that clinic. Have you come forward to help in that investigation? No. Still haven't come forward? No. Doctors, I understand it. You said that your signature on the prescription obtained by the Hourglass team, was forged. That's right. Have you made any attempt to uh, find out who was forging your signature? No. No attempt.
attempt at all. No, sir. You weren't even curious? I didn't know who no, was doing thank it. Thank you. No further questions. No comment. Mr. Frank, I put the expert testimony What about it? Mr. Frank? No. When you entered the waiting room of the clinic, Mr. Franklin, did you see anything that pertained to Dr. Lucas? Uh, yes, there was a sign on the wall with the names of several doctors. His was included among them. And uh, uh, on the receptionist's window, there was a mimeograph sheet of paper, which he had signed. And these things led you to believe that Dr. Lucas was employed at the clinic? Yes, and, uh, and of course, what the receptionist said, she said... Dr. Lucas is not here right now. Uh, did you stop there in terms of uh, determining Dr. Lucas's involvement? Uh, no. After we left the clinic, I went down the street to a uh, pay telephone, and I called Dr. Lucas at his private practice, and I left a message on his service, and Lauren Gartner, uh, who produced the, uh, the story, uh, left a message for him at the clinic. And he didn't get back to you? No, sir. <laughs> Do you have any idea of why he didn't? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Overruled. Defendant's state of mind is relevant here. Uh, I have found in my experience in a situation like this that uh, when people don't return your calls, it's because there's something they don't want you to ask them. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Franklin, how long did it take you to do the story on the Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic? Three days. Three days. And were you able to determine the whole truth of that story in three days? Well, uh, the majority of the legwork on the story was done by Lauren Gartner, who incidentally, I might say, is one of the most uh, capable journalists I've had the pleasure of working with. You see, the way our program was put together, uh, we have... Uh, a few dozen producers who spend uh, weeks, even months, reporting on a story. And the correspondence, because there are so few of us... So you were able to satisfy yourself in a couple of days and with a couple of phone calls that this man that you were about to accuse of a felony was guilty of that felony. Objection. Leading and argumentative. Sustained. Strike the question. You were able to satisfy yourself that Dr. Lucas had written that prescription. Yes, ma'am. Even though you knew that on the whole the prescription was fraudulent, you decided that it was a, a dishonest document but an honest signature. Well, I suppose you could say it that way. With the court's permission, we have some videotape that's been entered as evidence. We'd like to show it at this time. Go ahead. Did you even see Dr. Lucas when you went in for that prescription? Uh-uh. In fact, he wasn't the doctor that I saw when I went there initially. But the last few prescriptions have been signed by him. Do you remember conducting that interview? Uh, yes. Uh, that was a, uh, a follow-up interview. One of the last things we did out here. But that's not the way it appeared on television, is it? I'm not sure. Mr. Franklin, excuse me, but I find it incredible that you can't remember what your own story on your own television program looked like when it appeared on the air. Well, not exactly, no. I cover a great many things. Oh, well, in the period since you've done this story, for example, you've been overseas a number of times, haven't you? There have been a few wars and a couple of assassinations. So it's only natural that you would forget. Some things, yes. But you remember with great clarity calling Dr. Lucas from a street corner payphone. I believe that I remember that. But you don't believe that you remember how your own story appeared on television. Well, in that case, let's have a look at it. This is the way it appeared on the air. Did you even see Dr. Lucas 
when you went in for that prescription? No. Where did that answer come from? Is that an answer to a different question altogether that was put there during editing? Well, it, uh, it may have been, but I'd like to but point out that the sense the news, of that answer it? is essentially the same. That's the news. It's supposed to be spontaneous. Well, ma'am, if you let me finish. Now, uh, probably they used the shorter answer because, uh, well, it was the uh, answer to the same question in a reverse. What's a reverse? Well, that's customary practice. If you're using one camera and you're filming a conversation, say between you and me, the camera would be on you while we both were talking. Then it would come around on me. That's a reverse. And we'd edit uh, both of them together later. So the news that we see on television is maybe not the event that happened as it happened. It's more likely it's how you would like for it to happen to be more entertaining. Objection. Sustained. Were you involved with the editing of this particular story? I was present some of the time, yes. Can you tell us why this answer was chosen to be on the air? Well, probably because it was shorter. And it had nothing to do with the fact that the answer that you cut out might have had some bearing on what you were saying about Dr. Lucas. No, ma'am. We have one more piece of tape we'd like to show at this time. Really a bad person. Got caught in a trap. I was doing this for years. You make a lot of money. But when you see what it does to people, it really isn't worth it. Um, could we please have you looking at us when you say that last part? Last part? The when you see what it does bit. Okay, when you're ready. I've been doing this for years. You make a lot of money. But when you see what it does to people, it's just not worth it. That's excellent. Thank you. Now let me ask you. News, television news, by your own standards, television news is supposed to be spontaneous and unrehearsed. Yes, ma'am. And yet we see here this confession, this very moving thing by this doctor, and he's being directed like he's an, an actor in a soap opera. No, ma'am. That is not a soap opera. Those words were not written for him. That is customary practice. You uh, try to bring the facts across. You want to make the film effective. So you rehearse. No, no, not rehearse. rehearse. No. Uh, it's stopping to get film that works. Let me ask you this. When the concern over the dramatic impact of a story is so great the dramatic impact of having that doctor look into the camera as he confesses, or names names, or holds up a piece of paper and says, this paper was signed by so-and-so. When the concern over the dramatic impact is that great, how do we know that what we see on the news is news anymore? How do we know it's the truth? Um, is that a question, ma'am? <laughs> Oh, Mr. Franklin, I think that is a most serious question, yes. Well, ma'am, uh, if trying to produce something that will get people's attention and so that they're kind enough to tune you in the next time, if that's a crime, then I will confess to that. But I do believe that it's possible to do that, to present the news and to present what is true at the same time. And that is exactly what we try to do. Exactly, Mr. Franklin. You're far more concerned with entertainment than you are the news. I have no further questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Hi. Hi. You got a minute? Sure, I'll buy a drink. Thanks. Roy? Scotch and rocks, please. So what's up? Nothing. 
I just don't feel real good right now about what I do, about what we do. Ah, you're too good at it not to feel good about it. But she was right about those clips today. We did use them out of context. Well, I don't know if I, uh, if I buy that out of context. I mean, he just sold your scotch without telling you the whole history of Scotland. So it drinks out of context. Oh, no, Harold, that's not the point. I feel bad about that guy, that doctor. We violated him. If anybody else had done that, we would have been down there with the crew so fast doing a story about the injustice of it all. What about all the times we've been right? We've got people out of jail that shouldn't have been there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this. And I think that what we did was wrong. It was not wrong. Mistake. Maybe a mistake. Listen, we've got a responsibility to fight these things. Those little weekly newspapers out there that have to shut down because they can't afford the $5 million libel judgments they have to pay. I don't know. Did you see Entertainment Spotlight tonight? <laughs> no. That one's a, a little deep for me. All right, now, babe had some guy on it, a program director for ABS station, one of the affiliate stations. And they asked him if he thought that a negative verdict would hurt Hourglass. And he said, no, that people are not concerned about whether what they see on the show is true or not, just whether it's good television. The guy's an idiot. Rolls full of them. <coughs> Miss Craig, if you're ready to join us now. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I believe you're scheduled to call a witness this morning. Uh, could we beg the court's indulgence for just a few moments, please? won't be able to call that witness. All right. Well, it seems we have a fairly short day. Nice weather for it. Turn till tomorrow at night. What was all that about? Mrs. Milgram, OD'd. She's dead. You know, when Jeremy came in the courtroom this morning and told me she was dead, first thing I thought was, well, there goes the case. And then about an hour later, I, I said to myself, what do you mean there goes the case? It's like when uh, Dr. Lucas was testifying. I looked over at that Bob Franklin. And he was sitting there with a smug look on his face, like, hmm, isn't this interesting? I just wanted to shake him. I wanted to say to him, look, this is a real human being. You've screwed up his life. He just went on to something else. But for me to think, there goes the case. And someone's dead. I'm no better than he is. This isn't one of your nice, simple, drunk driving cases. 
This one's elegant. What you wanted, remember? Oh, please. <laughs> I can hardly remember my name right now. <sighs> Meredith Craig. Mm-hmm. Would I? All right, I'll be right there. Thank you, Detective Mickey. There's this guy, Peterman. He's one of the doctors, you know. They showed him on TV. And he's up to his ass in grief. He's singing us a complete opera down here. Names, dates, payoffs. It's terrific. What does he say about Lucas? Well, that's why I gave you a call. Thought it'd help you out. Peterman wants to be a good boy so bad, now you can't shut him up. Place your hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. Miss Craig? <clears throat> Dr. Peterman, you are on the staff of the Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic, is that correct? Uh, yes, I was. And you were engaged in the practice of writing illegal drug prescriptions. In fact, you were seen doing so on the Hourglass program. Uh, yes. Would you speak up, please? Yes. Was that practice widespread at the clinic? Uh, well, there, there were several people involved in it, yes. Was Dr. Edward Lucas involved in it? Uh, no, he, he wasn't. Are you certain? Yes, I am. How are you certain? Well, uh, I was... Uh, I was fairly close to the um, management of the clinic, which... Well, they were involved in this practice. The management was involved with the illegal prescriptions? Yes. Go on. And... Um, I had some conversations with uh, uh, Mr. Randall. Mr. Randall? Uh, the manager of the clinic, in which he made it clear that they, uh, uh, he, uh, wanted Dr. Lucas's name connected with the clinic. He, you know, another doctor who was licensed. And he also made it very clear that he didn't want Dr. Lucas to know about this practice. But Dr. Lucas's name was signed to some of those illegal prescriptions. Yes, yes, but he didn't sign it. Who did? Well, uh, well, Mr. Randall was uh, somewhat practiced at imitating his signature, uh, Dr. Lucas's signature, and uh, he, he would pass around these prescription pads that would have Dr. Lucas's name signed on uh, all of the blanks in the pad. He passed out pads to the other doctors with Dr. Lucas's name signed on them. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Peterman. No further questions, Your Honor. It's no more New York, huh? All right? It's good? All right. We're going to get this. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on. I can't believe it. Hands down, soul attack. The place was selling for Mr. Franklin, Bill Lewis, All News Network. Would you excuse me? Well, sir, uh, I'd just like to ask you a couple of questions. What, what do you think you're doing? Coming up here, out in front of the restaurant, right in the street? Well, sir, well, sir, I left a couple of telephone messages, but you wouldn't return my call. All right, get around here. Get around here. Now, am I in the clear now? Can you see me now? Am I in focus? Hello, hello. Go f*** yourself. I was upset. It's a lot of pressure. This is Bill Newis. All News Network, New York. Court will hear a closing argument by the plaintiffs. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been very patient through a very long trial, so I won't take up a lot of your time with this statement. I know you're eager to get back to your lives and your jobs, 
But if you're eager to get back to your jobs after just a few weeks, I want you to think about how eager Dr. Lucas is to get back to his job after all the months since the Hourglass program was first broadcast. In fact, I'd like to ask you to think quite a lot about what it's been like for Dr. Lucas. There was a time when he was very much like any one of you. He was a private citizen with a job and friends and a life that made sense. And one day he turned on his television set and 20 minutes later his life was changed. Instead of being a private citizen, he was a public figure. Instead of having a job, he had a cloud over his head. And instead of having friends, he knew a lot of people who were suspicious of him and who were embarrassed by him. And that life that had made sense fell apart in front of his eyes. It could happen to any one of us tomorrow. Bob Franklin could get a hold of a piece of paper with your name on it, Mr. Garver. And even though you knew you never signed that paper, Bob Franklin would be on television saying, Don Garver is a drug pusher. <clears throat> Cynthia Vargas is a drug pusher. And you would suffer the same humiliation and anguish that Dr. Lucas has suffered. Bob Franklin is a public figure by choice. He has worked very hard at becoming well-known, and being well-known, he has a lot of power. Edward Lucas did not choose to be a public figure. He had his choice taken away from him because Bob Franklin abused his power. Now, you can compensate Edward Lucas somewhat for what he's gone through, and I strongly urge you to do that but you cannot make his life go back to being that private and peaceful thing that it once was. Nobody can. And that is a crime. That is literally a crime. Thank you. Court will hear a closing argument by defendants. I know that you on the jury had a lot to think about and uh, digest these past few weeks, but I'd like to ask you to think back a few days ago, to Wednesday, I think it was, the day we heard hardly any testimony at all. It was the day that the plaintiffs had scheduled a witness who didn't show up in court. Now, I feel that left a little loose end hanging here. So I would like to tell you a little bit about that witness who didn't show up. Her name was Florence Milgram. Now, if you want to talk about somebody going through anguish, I think Florence Milgram is a very good example. Florence Milgram was a woman who, after an operation, became addicted to a prescription drug, phenobarbital. It's a very powerful depressant, a very, very addictive drug. And after she could no longer get prescriptions for it from her own doctor, why? She went down to the Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic and got her prescriptions from the doctors there for a price. And when the clinic was closed down, she found some other doctors in the same line of business. Now, she didn't appear here in court on Wednesday because she died of an overdose. She was taking about what she took every day, but, uh, see, her system had taken about as much as it could. And she died before they could get her to hospital. Now, we've talked a lot in this case about the law, about how the law in this area is very sharply defined, that it's not just a matter of making a mistake, it's a matter of reckless disregard and so on. And it may seem that 
It may seem that the law is overly narrow here, that it, it's unfair to the plaintiffs in a case like this. But I would ask you to look at it this way. One thing that my clients do when they put their program on is to help people like Florence Milgram. I believe that several clinics like the Queen's Health Alliance Medical Clinic were closed down because of that broadcast. And I don't doubt that several more will be. Well, it's too late to help Mrs. Milgram. But there are other people in the same kind of trouble out there. And if it's just a little bit harder for them to get whatever it is they're strung out on, then perhaps some of them will live long enough to kick their habits. And maybe that is what is so remarkable about Hourglass. Not that it's won a lot of awards, but that it's probably saved some lives. But I'll tell you, if my clients, every time they want to do a program like that, if they have to look over their shoulders and say, hey, if there's an error of fact in here or a, or a disputed fact that could mean a, a suit for $5 million, well, let me assure you that what you see on television will not be the news. It will be news filtered through fear and apprehension. And that's about as good as no news at all. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why the law is the way it is. Well, that's about it. Thank you. Do you think this will have an impact on the other suits that are pending against Hourglass? Oh, I don't know. It depends on what the verdict's going to be. Any predictions? Not Meredith? Meredith? They're coming back. Uh, we're going to pop. Uh, before you go down. <laughs> Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The jury finds for the defendants ABS News, Hourglass, Bob Franklin, Lauren Gartner, and Harold Stern. Case is dismissed. Court will adjourn. Sorry. It's not your fault. It's like when I heard it on television. I just don't believe you're hearing it. Come on, Castle, let's go get a drink. Okay. I am sorry. Yeah, well, what can you do? Speak to Miss Grave in just a minute. Sure? Thanks. I just want to try something out here. This came up in a conversation. Myself and a couple of the senior guys. We'd be very interested in having you come over. It's a good firm. I think you'd have a good time. You know, everybody thought you did a great job at the trial. Just had to bring up the dead lady, didn't you? Well, listen, this trial's over. Time to start thinking about a new one. So, you interested? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. What mall did you say you guys were in? Mall? Oh, that's where you... <laughs> I get it. That's funny. Are you sure you don't want to try the big time? <sighs> there are two kinds of law. I like them both. Please, no lectures. It was the fifth day of fighting in that troubled region, 
and both sides reported light casualties. And finally, a four weeks slander trial ended in Supreme Court in New York today. In a suit brought by Dr. Edward Lucas concerning allegations on an episode of Hourglass about illegal prescriptions, the jury found ABS News, Hourglass, its producers, and this correspondent not guilty. Till tomorrow, this is Bob Franklin. Have a good night. This has been an ABS News Presentation. <laughs>